the energy is exciting. The, the spectators are here to watch the beautiful game of football and hopefully the expectations will not be caught short. Now it's time for us to check out the first 45 minutes of the game. Now, with commentary team on standby, Ralph, over to you. And it's a beautiful afternoon here in the city of Lagos. It is at the Mobile Legend Johnson Arena at Oniko in Lagos Island, Nigeria. And today is match day five of the Aisha Buhari Cup. And this encounter is between the indomitable lionesses of Cameroon against the Black Queens of Ghana. Uh, the teams are placing ranked number two in Africa is Cameroon and ranked number four in Africa is Ghana. And of course, uh, the matchup is uh, just mouth watering uh, because uh, these are two traditional women's football sites in Africa two of the powerhouses on the continent uh, engaging each other today in this Aisha Buhari Foundation, of course, uh, Future Assured program, and it is the Aisha Foundation Cup, and a great one, expectedly, uh, these two teams will be giving us all the action-packed encounter. We know two of them to produce whenever they get their A-games going, and we're expecting that their A-games will be brought into the uh, this uh, beautiful Mobology Johnson Arena here in the city of Lagos. Uh, well, the, the flag all said to be brought out, and of course, the players have marched onto the pitch for this interesting matchup between Cameroon and Ghana. The two sides have not scored any goals so far in the tournament. South Africa bashed Ghana 3 0, and of course, uh, what a um, that result has been. Um, raising eyebrows in Accra and even all the cities of Ghana and they just couldn't understand how South Africa beat them by three goals to nothing where well, they say all that would change today Morocco were upset it was an upset uh, uh, against uh, Cameroon they beat Cameroon one nil and so two sides that are winless in their first games at the Aisha Buhari Cup are meeting here in this match day five encounter uh, don't forget that each team plays uh, two games here at the Aisha Buhari Cup and it's been quite interesting tournament for African women's football and it's just an up up uh, way for the African women of football here and don't forget that this tournament is being used by most of the teams to prepare for the African Women Cup of Nations uh, qualifiers that gets on the way in October across Africa and uh, we're expecting a whole lot to uh, come to bear when the African Women Cup of Nations qualifiers uh, get on the way come October. Uh, most of the African women footballers were not really happy uh, when Alcon, the African Women Championship or uh, Cup of Nations, was cancelled in the year 2020. And they have to wait another three years to get it on the way. And that's the way it is that the teams are marching out onto the pitch. Ghana, of course, are clad in their traditional yellow, uh, gold and black, I should say. And of course, uh, the Cameroonians also have come here in the traditional green and red as well as uh, national anthem of Cameroon goes first here And now we go over to the national anthem, anthem of, Ghana. of Ghana.
beautiful national anthem of the Ghana, the West African country of Ghana. The Black Queens are here and are hoping to make amends for their match they won defeat uh, uh, to the hands uh, to South Africa. It was a big, big upset and of course uh, the South Africans uh, simply had a stroll over the Ghanaians on that match they won 3-0 it ended here and of course uh, Cameroon still trying to uh, come to grasp with what exactly happened against uh, Morocco they lost that match by one goal to nothing and so each of the two sides will be trying to get a result out here here is the team sheet of the Cameroonian women's national team the indomitable lionesses uh, they've made two changes uh, from that side that uh, lost to uh, morocco and of course uh, goalkeeper ange bawu comes in for uh, her first match uh, so also is uh, the girl in jersey number 19 the better a beggar comes in for her first match uh, and this tournament uh, all the other players have started against uh, against Morocco, uh, Cheno Fallon, Budu Bridget, as well as uh, the captain of the side, Onguena Gabriel Abudi. And uh, we've got the officials here, uh, Medone Vincentia uh, from Togo, the center referee for today, Beauty Terra uh, comes in, uh, Beauty Terra from Nigeria, uh, not forgetting uh, Nuaja Hisane of Morocco. Uh, these are the officials, uh, assistant referees one and two, for this interesting matchup and this is Ghana starting lineup and we'll see three changes at the side that lost 3-0 to South Africa uh, Justice uh, Tweneboa uh, comes in Konadu uh, J Vivian who was a substitute last time starts today and of course uh, Wusua Elizabeth who was also a substitute in the last match also starts today Portia Buake is the captain of the side and of course uh, she is a standard player for the side anytime any day and uh, she'll be putting on a 56th cap at the national team level she has scored 23 goals going forward for the great Ghanaian player Messi Tego Kwaku uh, the coach of the side under pressure these days after that loss to South Africa and everyone's been talking about it and uh, the various cities of uh, Ghana they are not not happy at all uh, but she has promised to make amends today and they uh, they're gonna come out fighting uh, this man, uh, Gabriel Zappo, of course, uh, the coach of uh, Cameroon, started on a losing note in his very first match uh, against uh, Morocco. They lost that match 1-0, and he'll be also hoping that everything goes well uh, for his team today. And that brings uh, Jane. Jane, to the commentary position. Jane, welcome. How are you doing? I'm fine. Good afternoon, Ralph. Yeah, good afternoon, Africa. Good afternoon, Africa. Okay. And of course, um, two of the teams, uh, two of the teams playing today are searching for their first win. Too bad for the Cameroonian coach, Gabriel Zappo, who, when he was appointed, said he would want to win an AFCON and take nothing away from these two teams. They are the, one of the you know, biggest teams in African for women football. Too bad they are in a, the same continent with the Super Falcons. They haven't had the chance to win an AFCON. But we'll wait to see if Zappo can do that for the Cameroonians. He has to start with a win here today yeah, if uh, he's going to stay as long as he would want and not uh, stay under pressure at all. Uh, the Ghanaians uh, gets us underway here at the MG Arena, uh, but quickly give it away to the Cameroonians as uh, we have seen a very quick start to the game. And that's exactly what we are expecting because these two sides are two of the biggest sides in African women's football. And when you talk about uh, women's football in Africa, those two teams come to mind alongside Nigeria, South Africa, and a couple of the other countries. So early casualty uh, for Ghana down on the top. Uh, and for Bear Gladys. And that's a worry inside. Let's take a look what happened. Well, uh, I don't think, um, you know, uh, this lady, Onela. Tota went really well for that challenge and could be risky, especially with where she hit her. There you have a war inside. And that lady down so early in the game, Amphobia Gladys, a 23-year-old who plays for Police Ladies FC in Ghana. Many of the foreign-based players, uh, Legion for the 
Black Queens are not here today. Just a couple of them in for this encounter, uh, for this tournament, the Aisha Buhari Cup. Cleland takes that ball away from the Ghanaian Aguirre Janet. And so last time you, you, you did give, uh, you give us a prediction. I gave so. a wrong prediction. I'm uh, not going to try that today. Okay, you're not going to stick out your neck today. Ghana getting the initiative early on, uh, but then long chase for the ball that was uh, miscued that time into torture, throwing taken by Cameroon. Quick dash for the ball across comes Cena from captain of the side. Goalkeeper spews it. The referee goes ahead to protect the goalkeeper. The referee's a whistle came from, of course, the referee Amidome. And that was a smart move from the Ghanaians. They look at how they went from the flank, sent in the cross, and it was almost precise, except that the goalkeeper was there to stop. And even though he spilled the ball, I think the Ghanaians could have been smarter to get this one. A too bad combination we have uh, there with uh, Porsche also involved. <laughs> Keller takes the ball away. It came under pressure real that time uh, from that uh, cross that came from Nguene Gabriel. Opportunity calling for all oh, the goalkeeper again on the top. The two goalkeepers seem to be having problems grasping the board. Stay quite early anyway. Well, uh, no matter if you call it early, but any mistake at this point could actually cost both teams. Uh, although I'm running away from giving a prediction on this game, Ralph, but I think one of the teams would get their first win. I don't think it's going to be a barren draw like we saw yesterday. Okay, we'll be expecting to see which team gets its right and gets a win here as the Cameroonians uh, try to clear their lines. Ball goes for a corner kick. To come from the near side to Ghana. First uh, full attacking for, uh, for the Ghanaians, uh, ending in a corner kick. It was a very short one, a short called for. That was a we were short. Very much we were uh, from Adube, Princilla. Cameroonians are taking it easy. Both sides have proved, uh, promised to improve the performance. And we are already seeing it. Cameroon coming forward again. Uh, this time they couldn't go past the defense of Ghana. Goalkeeper Fafali Dumehasi, the 27 year old. She also plays for police ladies. Janet giving the ball away, but then they recover very quickly. Call Manelen. Jesse tugging there, and the referee is with the goal. Uh, she's very disappointed with that. Uh, Jesse tugging about a free kick already taken. Fast paced encounter here. Ball into torch and this near side. Throwing taken there by Amphobia. And I'm sure you'll be liking the quick pace of the match. Well, hoping it yields something, but I like the movement, um, especially as it's going in end to end right here. In that. I mean, not one goalkeeper has been tried, so both the Cameroonian and the Ghanaian goalkeepers have actually been involved in action in a space of six minutes. Indeed of them at that time spilling the ball but all uh, they were well covered by the defense chance for a long thrust but they decided to make it at uh, the Cameroonians very much an even game so far with Chester 
and Phobia. All into torch now from the near side here for the throwing. The Cameroonian call it and Zama. And Zana has been very, very instrumental to most of the balls on this side. And she was a Trojan in that match against uh, Morocco, but unfortunately couldn't yield any result for the side. Chance there. The goalkeeper doing a good job that time. was a very big tackle the referee was close to the action Claudia Daba was the one brought down a free kick to Cameroon all right I do I think she went on that for basically for the ball but missed it and that's why the referee called this one lucky to have escaped without a card and phobia class went for the ball and um, well it looks like the Cameroonian uh, uh, Ombodu actually did get the player and not the ball this time around and the fireworks we're expecting to see in this game Ralph so far I think it's it's gradually coming gradually gradually right now the uh, Ghanaian getting the treatment and the Cameroonian coach Zabo just a watch his own. Also, the free kick will come now. Coming from the legs of uh, captain of the side, Duak here. Portia. That's year old Portia, one of the foreign best players for the Black Stars of Ghana, Black Queens of Ghana rather, who is right here on the pitch and hoping to be um, Very difficult time in the final third there. Bench of the Cameroonians with the assistant ref assistant coach. That's additional a bit of instruction. The game has been just all over the place. None of the team have been able to assert an authority to the game so far. Although the Cameroonians have looked more physical going by the number of questions they've gotten so far and the fouls um, you know, that um, the Black Queens have won against them so far in this game, I think they also have to calm down. Indeed. We, we saw Rose Bella doing very well in the um, game against Cameroon, though she, uh, against Morocco, though she didn't score, but today she's starting from the bench. Well, uh, we actually understand that m most of the coaches have been trying out different formations. I mean, that's the purpose of the friendly. So he probably wants to see what it would be like if he stands the, it starts this particular line. Okay. I hardly know if there are football friendlies anymore. Every team wants to win every game. Um, friendlies are becoming more competitive these days. Cameroon try to build from uh, the far side. Great defending that time. Takes a tumble. Kameni Alice Flora scores a, a nudge. And a free kick to Ghana.
Afriki Ghana. And Afriki was blocked. But here comes Phobia sending that ball forward. Drawn down the flank there from Adubia Princilla. Chance to cross. Two Moroccans out, two Cameroonians rather putting pressure on the Ghanaian, and the balls uh, finally rose into torch for throwing. I think Colin Allen could have done better there, although uh, she won a three. Let's see if Ghana will utilize this three. And Phobia, a chance to shoot. Great defending that time from Asantewa Grace. Asantewa Grace, 20 years of age, a place for Real Betis, Femin, in Spain. Boak here, brought down. Was a Boak here, All Africa Games, a gold medalist in 2015. Oh, and this time around, of course, it was Cameroon at the receiving end. Good to see the uh, Black Queens uh, matching their physicality. I shall was going to talk about Ongwene. A strong Cameroonian captain who's been there almost forever. It's all Cameroon now attacking from the right. A chance to cross. Sliding tackle takes the ball into corner. And that uh, movement by the Cameroonians uh, get a round of applause uh, from the bench. It's be a corner kick to Cameroon. Colette right there to take it. Colette is going to be a left footer, expectedly an in swinger. You just fancy the way the players have converged on just one area. It comes a low one, and I couldn't just go past a uh, gear. Janet Clarence finally takes the ball away from danger. Short in there by Leon Bibu, one of uh, those making their first start. A phobia. Well, that part of the pitch uh, looks a little bit slippery. Uh, communication needed there and uh, she did just decided to put the ball away and uh, that's talking about Coleman Ellen didn't want to take any chances at all sends the ball uh, far off into corner into torch for throwing to Cameron well I think that was a smart one from Coleman and uh, saved the team from undue pressure and trouble at this early uh, point of the game it's been all Cameroon. They come forward again. The ball on Gwene. And Gwene is the danger girl. She's 32 years of age. A place for CSKA Moscow. One of the more experienced players on the Cameroonian side. Who was uh, she? Was there at the 2012 Olympic Games? And scored the team's a long goal in that tournament. Captain Ongwene on the ball. Good touch. A chance for a left footed cross. She does cross, but didn't go the right way. A wayward cross from the captain Ongwene. Ongwene was player of the match in that famous 2 1 win over Switzerland at the Women's World Cup in 2015 in Canada. Channel to Amphobia. Oh 
and justice uh, to a ball uh, to a neighbor. couldn't take it any further well the Ghanaians tried to build from the back this time around but I guess they couldn't go farther uh, outside of their own half of the field Cameroon all the way but I just see where the last man uh, last lady in defense is uh, telling you how much they want to get an, a goal in this one everybody's gone up to attack Onela Onela again on the ball dispossessed Good touches on the ball, good chase for Adube Prinsilia, uh, but then checkmated uh, by Bridget Umbudu. Get a place for Rivers Angels in Nigeria Women's Professional League. Sent into torch for three into Ghana. Smart defending by Fallon. Lefometu, Cheno. Offside. Assistant referee Kabenda Terra. Beauty. Sport on with that uh, offside call. Ghana on the move now. Adubia Prinsilla. Priscilla wasn't able to go past the Colette Zana. <laughs> Throwing to Ghana. The temper of the match dropped up from what we saw earlier on when the game started. Well, Ghana just trying to get it right in the final third. The movement continues for Ghana. A chance for a shot. And that left foot is short. It comes in. I got the goalkeeper sprawling on the canvas. Well, it could have been the first we saw here, the first goal for the Ghanaians in this tournament, the first goal for this match, but I don't know what happened there. The Ghanaians are becoming very workmanlike. Very quick on the ball when they go forward. You can see exactly what it means for Coach Tego. Almost. And almost will do the job, and Grace would have to do better. Indeed, uh, she has to do better. But take a look at that again. And look at that bright shot, almost into the box. Did actually beat the goalkeeper. She wasn't going to get it if actually if that ball headed on target. Asantewa, Grace. Not graceful that time as the ball didn't go into the net. Seeing a twin the one minute of action. Cameroon nil, Ghana nil. And that's day five of the Aisha Buhari Cup in Lagos, Nigeria. Well, the game is looking positive for both sides, but I don't think Cameroon is still retaining um, the, the formation, the shape that Gab Zabu set up when the match started. So the Ghanaians are beginning to peg them back and sustain a bit of the pressure. The free kick will come. 
from the near side here, fouls committed, eight fouls against the two committed by Ghana. So Cameroon caught fouling the uh, opponent eight times so far in the game. Goalkeeper Bawu Ange Gabriel looking to deal with this corner kick that will come from Portia Boakye of Jogaden of Sweden. It comes a left footed one, a head go of uh, a referee noticing something there, and of course, a whistle going for a free kick inside their own half. Sorry, 18 yard box, I should say. For Cameroon. The Ghanaians are beginning to attack more in the last uh, couple of minutes. Challenge from behind there, uh, but she keeps her footing and continues. Threads a good pass. Uh, Ghana on the move now. Ball picked up uh, beautifully and a chance for a short court for that opportunity has been thwarted and of course a great defending that time. I draw the ball from Coleman Ellen. Great challenge there. And he elevated the challenge, and of course, almost uh, continuing her run. But then stop at Dobia Prencilia. It was a stop there by Colette Zana. Beautiful. I like what uh, Colette did there, ensuring that she didn't go further, you know, cutting in and blocking, even though we saw her fall. players behind the ball Asantewa Grace and a black here black here Portia captain of the side goalkeeper Bawu Ange Gabriel arranging her wall getting set for this free kick and here he comes and he executed that training ground plot not quite were caught in their own web as they try to execute that a training ground plot of the free kick it wasn't to be apologies from Asantewa Grace well I think when she turned to see that uh, Coleman Ellen was not you know on the side she could have actually tried something else rather than taking the ball to back to her The goal situation here at the MG Arena in Lagos. Too strong for Amob and Phobia. Pulling to torch now for the throwing going to Cameroon. Just in case you're wondering what's going on, it's not the African Women Cup of Nations, it is the Aisha Buhari Cup here in Lagos, Nigeria. This is match day five. Coach Messi Tego has promised Ghanaians that uh, things will be different this time around. Uh, she came under severe pressure after uh, that 3 0 loss to merciless beating uh, in the hands of uh, the Banyana Banyana of South Africa. South Africa and Nigeria will end proceedings of this tournament. On Tuesday. Well, I think that was um, not a very fair one that we saw from Colette right there against 
Princella. You could practically see her feeling the pain, a jab on the leg. Yeah, Colette not taking any prisoner at all. All action, captain of the side as Cameroon come marching forward. The ball just keeps running away from Onela Ivanic Tota, 23 year old. Hopefully, she will get to learn to control the ball. Onela to take the corner kick as she decides to leave it. Looks like uh, he's going to be captain of the side on Gwene, Gabriel Abudi to go for it. Gwene voted the best player at the 2016 Alcon. Comes with a low free kick opportunity for Cameroon. Oh, the rebound could not be tucked in. As they get a second chance, a second bite of the cherry of the corner kick. I think it was a poor reaction from the Ghanaians. I think they could have done better in that second reaction to, you know, utilize something. But let's see what happens. Nothing comes out of that a second corner kick. The ball comes back on Gwene. She left foot and a stop. The ball has stopped there from moving any further into the Ghanaian six yarder by Janet Aguirre. Here comes Onela. Onela locating her girl who is trying to turn Elian. Strong challenge on her. Represents play on. Action goes on. Attack coming for the Ghanaians. And they are coming through Adobea, Priscilla. Priscilla keeps moving. Priscilla, she's been brought down. Represents play on. No. Oh, now the whistle goes against Princilia as she was down on the top, uh, raising her hands, expecting a call of a penalty or any kind, but it was against her every, at the end. Every player raises their hands when they are down in the 18 yard box, waiting for the lock, but I don't think she was brought down. She lost the ball and she went down. And even if a call would have been outside the box, I take a look at that. Yes, that talk, uh, it was a a tap on her feet and she went down a road into the box but rafa if you look at that again it wasn't enough to bring any person down she was in full flight anyway any contact would have brought her down but then that was outside the box anyway long ball comes in into the box uh, searching on Gwene. oh Gwene collides with the goalkeeper that was a big collision but on Gwene, a very strong girl, still standing. And goalkeeper Fat, uh, Fafale Dumehasi gets up and gradually take a look at that, how it came about. Well, of course, she went and uh, on motion, couldn't control the motion, and that's why she landed into the goalkeeper. I don't think the referee will be taking her prisoner for this one. Great goalkeeping, too. She picked up that ball and, of course, uh, you know, just... Uh, moved away from uh, Ongwene and Ongwene couldn't reach the ball and made that contact. Action has resumed. Actually brave of the goalkeeper to have moved, uh, you know, to have got that ball with the force Ongwene was coming with. I think that was what she was playing at. Surely. Ghana in control. Midway in the half of Cameroon. Timely defending there from Claudia. Header takes the ball away from Onela. Work here. Port here. Work here, Port here, of course. That lady has been nominated for the African Women Footballer of the Year four consecutive times uh, since 2018. Now on Gwene, pushed down. The movement continues. Claudia sending the ball forward for Cameroon. Can they get anything out of it? Kameni. And finally, it was at the leg of uh, Eliane. 
sending the ball into two away from target. A futile effort for the Cameroonian. They came really close, that movement, the combination. But I guess the final decision by Ahmed Bivot Elene to shoot directly at Dimpeo for them. And it looks like that, that uh, collision with the goalkeeper is affecting her now. She may need more than, uh, she may need the medical attention at this point. And that will be a big blow for the Ghanaians. Uh, because uh, Fafale Dumehasi is one of the big assets of the side. Dumehasi, 27 years of age. Eliane Bibu, apologetic. But this is time for the Cameroonians to get back and get a few instructions uh, from uh, the technical crew. fans have come here on this beautiful Monday afternoon in Lagos to see this encounter and everyone is happy experiencing watching the women the ladies do the what they know how to do on this Aisha Buhari Cup which has given the six countries including our very own Super Falcons the opportunity to play quality friendly games in the space of what one week. Claudia Daba getting a few words from a coach Zabo Zabu started on a losing note when Morocco condemned his side to a defeat in the first game in charge. This is his second game in charge of the Cameroon women's national team. The indomitable Lionesses. Well, with a tall dream, with a tall target that he has set for himself, I think uh, I would agree with you when you said that he has to start showing that he can win the outcome for the Cameroonians by winning this game. Exactly. When you win in preparatory games and then it is expected that you might get it right when the competition gets on the way. It's the Aisha Buhari Cup here in Lagos, Nigeria. Cameroon nil and Ghana nil so far 34 minutes into the game. Opportunity for Cameroon now away very interesting runner from Coleman Ellen sends the ball forward to Adubia Priscilla. Priscilla beat into it by Bridget Umbudu. Ball still on the line. Not totally out now. Out totally. Look at that shading. Look at that confidence from uh, Bridget. And uh, it looks like she exactly knew that she positioned herself well enough to block her from making any move except she leaves from that position. She will be doing that for Rivers Angels at the African uh, Cup Women's Champions League when it gets on the way in Egypt. Funny enough, no Cameroonian team will be taking part. The only Cameroon team, Min Proof, that played in the qualifiers uh, couldn't make it. In fact, it was uh, the Malabo Kings uh, that knocked them out of it and uh, the first goal for the Malabo Kings right there uh, in Yaoundé was scored by Bella Rose, the Cameroonian. And of course it's interesting also to know that maybe, if not the fact that the Super Falcons are the champions of the women Afghan, that's the only reason Nigeria, as River St. Gels of Nigeria, are in that tournament because Wafu B got two slots due to that particular reason. We're second in the yeah. Wafu B uh, qualifies. Indeed, Hasaka uh, <laughs> ladies of Ghana won that uh, Zone B uh, tournament, uh, but then uh, Rivers Angels and Hasaka will be representing the Wafu Zone B. Uh, I did talk about Malabo Kings, incidentally, a Nigerian goalkeeper Ruth Chinasa Sunday keeps for the side. Free kick taken quickly by Buakia Portia. Header takes it away by Onela. For control, Cameroon take control, left-footed effort across the line, going forward, a hot chase for the ball from the near side. Finally, it is the leg of the Ghanaian defender, a girl, Janet, very strong girl. A beautiful passage of play, Portia changes her mind, comes back. And Phobia sent it forward. 
to Asantewa Grace. A good cross, it comes in a glancing header, the goalkeeper doing a great job, fantastic goalkeeping, and what a header. As you can see exactly what it means to that a girl could not do a J Vivian, great header from her. And of course, look at how the movement started. You actually had uh, first Elizabeth. Elizabeth not added this time around, sending in the cross before she gave the header. Well, I tell you, um, a great time for the Ghanaians there. That was a good, good move across from Adubia Priscilla. was simply awesome. And the header was even better. Great effort. And if they continue that way, they might achieve their aims. Uh, they set out for and getting a victory at the Aisha Buhari Cup in Lagos, Nigeria. Ghana, they move forward again. Great defended that time. Oh, Ghana still in control. Porsche Buakia and Phobia. Sensible forward. Good touches. That should I fall from Adubia and a Prince uh, Adubia Princilla it was uh, that found Amphobia Gladys. Uh, she just couldn't uh, direct her effort. I'm, I'm sure she'll be regretting sending that ball to Amphobia because she could have done better with the didn't really understand where she was trying to play that ball into, but pointing towards her life or her right rather or her left indicated that she wanted to send that cross, but it went completely off target. Ghana has really found their rhythm. But it's Cameroon now. Oh, good one. But then, very strong torture from Noshe Nina. Noshe Nina, the corporate that time, as she plays for Berry Ladies. And the Ghanaian local scene. opportunity beckoning for Ghana once again oh bit into it Priscilla bit into it good effort Gwena's effort and now finding her lady as that a long ball is sent forward good communication you have the Cameroonian captain down on the floor holding her back A warning to Coach Zabo from the referee Amedume Vincentia. I wonder what the coach is talking about. Uh, coach Tego. This is a war inside for every Cameroonian, uh, says the captain of the side. And look at that tackle. And of course, she was taken from the back, and that's definitely why um, the the referee the coach rather Zabo was complaining you had Amphobia Gladys and not being fair to her this time around on Gwene of course one of the greats of the Cameroonian women's national team the indomitable lionesses voted best player at the 2016 African Women Cup of Nations on Gwene Gwene also scored the equalizer against Netherlands in the team's second game at the Women's World Cup. And Gwene has been in the national team since 2008. Expect her to be back and continuing. That Monella Evaric, Evanik Tauta could not uh, get a ride, but now three ball back to goalkeeper. Fafali Dumehasi. Boakia to um, Amphobia. Tackle from behind. By Bridget on Budu. Portia with the free kick. Gwena back on the pitch now. Good touch from her. Waiting to see 
assist, uh, someone to assist her for finally. And Phobia sending that ball as she was searching for Kunadu. Esther Kitt with Cameroon's uh, throw from the far side. Goalkeeper getting involved and clearing. Big battle there. Opportunity Ghana short comes in a good goalkeeping again. Round of applause from all and sundry here at the stadium. Fantastic goalkeeping from Bau Ange Gabriela. And another's taking a toll on her. And look at the way that shot came. Look at the flight of the ball. And of course, as she didn't allow the shot to go past her. Great goalkeeping from Gabriel Bau. Another time to take the treatment from the medics for goalkeeper. Bawu Ange Gabriel. She plays for Mean Proof. Most Cameroonian players, women's football players, have gone through that club. Louvre Mean Proof. Some of the men of the pens and, uh, of course, uh, colleagues, sports writers of fraternity have come here also. They are all here to cover this match and the tournament always nice to watch a game in a very very cool atmosphere play suspended so that the goalkeeper can be taken care of Goalkeeper is up now. The corner kick can come from the near side. And Phobia Gladys all set to take it for Ghana. Players have converged on that 18 yard box, expecting the ball from Gladys. Referee having a word of with uh, a Ghanaian player or set now for the corner kick to come from Gladys. In by Gladys. Well, in by Gladys that time and away by Bridget Mbudu. Just two minutes of stoppage time. We've seen now the full 45 minutes of the half. Free kick comes from Cameroon. Headed away. Not quite now. Uh, the shot won't trouble goalkeeper. Fafali in any way. Amphobia taking on Nguene. Oh, Amphobia wins the battle and it moves with the ball. Strong touch from her and let the ball into torch. The throw in. Boachia Portia. Throwing taken by Colette and Zana. Into the last minute of uh, the added on time here. Colette 
with the throw, a long heave of it. Goes as far as Captain Guac here. Portia, the left foot, sending the ball forward. Ghana in control. Great tackle. Tackle from Fallon. Mefumetu Cheno. Lady who plays for Fury FF. 31 years of age. Give me the ball. The referee says it looks like it'll come to the end of this half. End of the half from the whistle of Medume yeah. Vincentia, the Togolese FIFA badge official. And in the first 45 minutes of this encounter, and it's been a very, very interesting matchup between the two giants of African women football. No goal to tell the story, but that's all she wrote in the first half. Uh, this lady, the two goalkeepers were tested a couple of times, and of course, none was beaten, and none is shy at the moment. And so that's the way it is ending. The players of the Ghana Black Queens marching out of the pitch to a return for the second 45 minutes. At the end of the first half, Cameroon nil, Ghana nil. Uh, I realized.
do it. A dominating Cameroon side, and uh, that's of course in Gwene, living up to the name of captain, um, creating a lot of chances. Although they were not all, they were not. Um, we couldn't. Um, we couldn't quite. The, the um, chances created weren't quite um, converted into goals. It's been an interesting first half with the game being played on the full pitch and not just one side dominating, uh, to both goalkeepers being involved and we're expecting for the next 45 minutes. Now, I am joined by the FIFA Secretary General, Madam Fatma. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, ma'am. Okay, so what does it uh, feel like to be here today watching these beautiful ladies play on this pitch? First, it's very exciting to be back to Niger. As you know, um, the day I was appointed FIFA Secretary General, I was serving here in my capacity of UN resident coordinator. And what I've seen uh, this afternoon between the two great teams of Africa is very promising of uh, what uh, the um, CAF qualifiers uh, that will be played at the end of the month and also the FIFA qualifier for 2023 would look like. Okay, so um, how does this um, tournament affect women's development, football development in Africa? It affects uh, football development in many ways. First, it will allow the, the African national team, women teams to play more often, to know each other, and also to grow while they are getting ready for a bigger tournament, whether at the continental level or at uh, the um, uh, international level. I have had the pleasure to, see, um, to watch um, uh, two years ago in France, uh, South Africa, Cameroon and Nigeria representing Africa at uh, the 8th edition of uh, the FIFA Women's World Cup in France and uh, we are getting ready now for 2023 that we'll see for the first time in the history of FIFA a Women World Cup hosted by two different confederations with an expanded team from 24 to 32 and uh, I'm sure that uh, with the level of play we have seen on the pitch today I'm uh, very hopeful that uh, um, like in a uh, few years ago, Africa will go beyond the uh, uh, face group and maybe uh, one day hope to lift this most converted trophy that is the women, women, FIFA Women's World Cup. Okay, thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. Well, and there you have it. That has been the FIFA Secretary General telling us about how the Aisha Buhari Cup impacts women's football in Africa. Now, with just a few minutes to kick off, it's about time for us to experience another 45 minutes of beautiful football. Will there be a goal or will it also end in a goal draw? We'll find out in the second half.
Cameroon nil and Ghana nil. And we're expecting an explosive second half here because these two teams, none have scored a goal in the tournament, none have won a game in the tournament, and none have even drawn a game. Both of them lost their opening games. But here, uh, the start of the first half, uh, just in case you missed it, Cameroon and Ghana drew, uh, drawing nil-nil. And of course, a goal attempts, uh, you can see two attempts by Cameroon and three attempts by Ghana. One of the attempts by Cameroon was on target and two of the attempts by Ghana was on target and the possession it was 43 percent of possession to Cameroon and 47 going to Ghana and so we'll see what the second half will bring for the two teams two teams that have talked so tough coming into this game each of them lost their opening games and did tell their fans that this game will be different and each of them promising victory but only one can achieve that. Well, of course, we had the, the coach of the Ghanaian, the Ghanaian team um, fielding a 4-2-4 formation for this game to have enough ladies in attack. And I think they have paved the way for her uh, from what we've seen so far. But we'll see how the second half will commence also for the Cameroonians who will be depending uh, so much on Kamenia Les Flora's uh, work from the flank. Let's see how that will play out as the second half begins. Indeed, and it's Cameroon, the Indomitable Lionesses, to get us on the way here. Second 45 minutes. Off the boots of the Gala Lien. Bibu to get the ball rolling. 40 second 45 minutes. All eyes on the referee to get the second half on the way. and making sure that everything is said before the second half is uh, on the way here. Finally, the second half gets on the way here. First 45 minutes ended. In a barren situation for the two sides. Two traditional sides and of course uh, two of the powerhouses in African women football. Turning round around. No Shanina. Nice Cameroon to take it to Claudia Berber. And Phobia sending it backward still to the goalkeeper. Can check out the team sheet of uh, Cameroon Indomitable Lionesses being screwed at the bottom of your screen just in case you missed it at the start of the half. It's going to be a corner kick. Well, a throw it is, only a throw, and it will come from Colette Zana. Colette throws, goes as far as uh, the girl in gold. That was a wayward cross. Lands on the roof of the post. Ghana coming forward. Good touch on the ball there. Coming from a Fallon. Fallon waiting for it. Fallon picks it up. Goes back to the goalkeeper. Bawu Gabriel. Gabriel goes to the left. Colette sends it forward. Picked up by Nguene. Nguene has been shoved aside. Colette, good options, senses forward, I'm going a bit into it, throwing to Ghana, quickly taken two sides of the main business in this second half. And Fobea, 
Gladys throws for Ghana and this one is searching for scores it was meant for Adubia Princilla Adubia couldn't get ahead onto it a ball into Tosha for or rather across the lines for corner goal kick only beg your pardon that the ball should be sent back to the goalkeeper for that uh, goal kick to be retaken communications a gap in communication that time between the goalkeeper and the referee it was a three-way communication between the goalkeeper the assistant referee and the referee Finally, decoded. Fallon sends that ball forward. And Boaki sends it back. Knight is Cameroon through Claudia Deba. To Nguene. Nguene can cut in. Size to right foot for uh, that one that was, has been blocked off. Ghana cleared. sides are playing some beautiful football but then they need to translate all that beauty of the game into the most beautiful thing in football which is goals a foul well called there um the referee definitely saw clearly how the cameroonians were on Priscilla, as she was making that move, of what could have been a beautiful attack for the Ghanaians. That was a big clearance at that time, even though the whistle had gone, a big clearance from Bridget, from Bundu. And also look at how uh, you had Falun Techno falling on her, um, even after sliding her down. Ghanaian player down on the top receiving treatment and that's a, a dubia princilla almost whipping there mm, looks like she's really in pain would take more than a sprays on the pitch to get her back on her feet but i see her still coming back Meanwhile, the sport, it's free kick to Ghana. Big plot there. We've got a Portia right there at the middle. Two orders. And we'll see who it's going to be. And it is oh, a big short. That comes in and not too strong. And not exactly what uh, the training ground the plot was all about. At that time it was a Santewa Grace that took that uh, effort. Ghana comes forward again. Another wayward short. Well, I think we're going to have a, a phobia Gladys, uh, you know, be more precise and more careful and try another tactics the next time. Looks like the long shot didn't work for her this time around. Goalkeeper Gabriel gets us back on the way, and of course, that header from Fallon. Ghana take back control. Konadu cuts offside. Assistant referee at the far side, Enuaja Hisane, the Moroccan. A good call right there by the AR this time around. She was definitely caught offside, and that's talking about a Kanuda Vivian. Women's football on the rise and rise. Ball from a Claudia action called for the goalkeeper coming out, and of course, they're doing well. Goalkeeper Fafali Dumeasi. Oh, 
Kunadu. Side once again. Second time around twice as much. Kunadu being caught offside there. The Black Queens are quicker on the ball now. That by Helena didn't work. A chance for the Ghanaians to get on. Big clearance. They take the ball away. Coming from a Fallon. Cheno. Still opportunity for the Ghanaians. This time, what will it be? No penalty, corner kick only. Look at the excitement from the bench of the Ghanaians that this time around are definitely there, all looking for a goal. And uh, you will find out that that move and the foul on Ousai Elizabeth was what stopped what could have been a beautiful goal at this point. And that the coach of the side was all smiles. Clearly, that was a tackle. She was on the move. Uh, this time around, it was Priscilla on the move. Oh, that, would, that should have been a penalty. Really. That should have been a penalty, a slide from the back. The contact was really there all for all to, all, everyone to see. Uh, but of course, uh, the referee not going to give any penalty at this point in time. She had the ball, she had the potential. There was a tackle from behind her. I think that could have meant something. Wusua Elizabeth gets up and uh, will continue as this uh, corner kick will come from the far side. At that time, the laughter from Messi Tegu tells the story of uh, that tackle uh, that was not a call for a penalty by the referee. But also, the, uh, I think the assistant referee, uh, Hisane Inoja from Morocco, didn't pick that also. The corner kick comes now. Goalkeeper not able to get to it. Opportunity for the oh, goalkeeper comes back, picks it up for a second time of asking. Uh, but greater defending at that time also from Ombudu, who was right there. I think Abudu have done so much for the Cameroonians since the beginning of this game. Remember that, that save she made that just towards the end of the first half. And now she has made another brilliant save for the Cameroonians. Ghana come forward again. But the ball goes as far as Fallon. Cheno. Fallon. Picking out the ball there. Esther Kitt. Hera takes it into touch. The throw in Cameroon. Going for either is Esther Kitt. Esther Kitt with the throw. A big battle there, finally. It is uh, the Cameroonian Beth Abega. Look at her looking like a warrior. Yeah, of course, a Florian Noshenina there. And also good to have uh, Noshenina being served her own pills. Oh, you need is a referee to count it at uh, in the WWE. She was on top. I see a yellow card out of the pocket of the referee. Who for? That's for Nella, Vanik, Tota. And this is what end on Nella, the yellow card from behind. She pushed down. A fellow player. A notch from behind and not uh, going down well with the referee. Despite all the tackles we've seen in this game, we've not seen so many yellow cards. Gwene leaving the ball behind, what comes back to pick it up. Colette. Colette gives the ball away. The chance for a long ball now. And this is a good run. A goalkeeper comes out. This is oh, this would have been a great goal, but didn't go the right way. 
everyone expected her to chase the board still, uh, but then Adubea Princilla allows that one to go just like that. It would have been a great effort. Uh, look at that. Look at the effort she put in. Look at all the race, the solar race uh, for a few meters that Adobe Priscilla made there, beating a the goalkeeper, but she sh probably should have controlled the ball rather than tapping it in from that distance because the pressure meant she couldn't catch up from, with the ball even when it was moving off targets. It would have been difficult to control because the goalkeeper was on rushing and uh, any contact anyway uh, would still have been uh, something of a red card to the goalkeeper. But all this in substitution, Mari Kong comes on to take the place of Claudia. That's the first substitution. And now a second one comes, and this time from Morocco. And the day of Rose, Rose Bella comes up in to take the place of Eliane Bibu. Surprised that uh, she was, uh, that she didn't start. Uh, Rose Bella, uh, like for like a substitution, an attacker for an attacker. Rose Bella, of course, uh, is one of the better attackers for the Cameroonians. Let's see what she will be bringing into the game. Rosbella, of course, has scored the first goal for her side, Malabo Kings, in front of a packed Amadou Ahijo Stadium in Yaoundé. That's when her side beat her. Yeah, yeah. This opportunity back on in Priscilla! Great goal for Priscilla Dube, putting the Black Queens of Ghana ahead. It was a great run for her, almost a solo run, and then uh, she went, uh, placed herself uh, very well, and uh, took uh, that short and beaten the goalkeeper, Gabrielle Bau Holo. And a wonderful run, just as she made earlier this time around. She beat the goalkeeper. There was nothing the keeper could have done. Look at how she carefully, carefully placed that ball right there, uh, beating Adoba in goal. The And if there was anyone who would have gotten a goal for the Ghanaians, it looks likely to be uh, Priscilla Adoba from the beginning of the game. Uh, she has shown the stuff that she has made with uh, for one of the foreign best players for the Ghanaian team in this game. And definitely the difference in the... Uh, have created the difference in the scoreline right now between Ghana and Cameroon. Indeed, uh, Priscilla Adoba's goal gives Ghana the lead. And it's Cameroon nil, Ghana won. Priscilla Dubia. Now Messi Tego. Dish out more instructions. Opportunity comes from, uh, for Cameroon to level up. Can they take that opportunity? It's been wasted. Priscilla Adubia, who plays for Racing Feminas. Giving Ghana the lead here. Ghana missing some of their foreign legion in this tournament. Earlier on in July, the Ghana coach Tego called up 38 players to uh, the Black Queens camp to prepare for the outcome qualifier against Nigeria. And this is part of that preparation. One thing that um, every Ghanaian was asking is why Elizabeth Ado was absent this tournament and uh, the reason was provided by the media director of the Ghana Football Association and he says it was because of indiscipline. Priscilla Dubia comes forward again this time she makes a brick wall as three Cameroonians were there and finally the ball has been cleared by Fallon Cheno So it was told that Elizabeth Ado was indisciplined and that's why she was omitted from the squad. And the media director, Henry Asante Toom, said Black Queen's captain Elizabeth Ado was dropped from the squad due to indiscipline. And that comment of uh, accusing the Ghanaian FA of not organizing enough uh, friendly games for the side elicited all that. 
but we're expecting that she will be back alongside a foreign legion against Nigeria. Well, they need her services. She's still one of the brightest stars for the, um, the Queens of Ghana and quite sad to see her not be taking part in this prestigious Aisha Buhari Invitational Tournament. Of course, uh, this is uh, all the foreign legion of most of the countries are here. This is because uh, it's a FIFA approved tournament. Free kick comes from the Ghanaian Buak here, Portia. A very difficult position for the Cameroonians at this point, hoping not to concede more goals because the uh, Ghanaians are not backing down. They continue to put more pressure. We've seen Prince Tila come closer even after that goal. And now, rather than chase a goal, the Cameroonians would have to be defending. Going out is Onela. Onela's day is complete here. And to take her place is uh, Mafo Alice Matsing. Like for like change all again for the Cameroonians as they chase the game here. Clarence from the new girl with her first touch, Mafo. a long way to go just into the 65th minute of the game clear answer from Brack here put here the control that time from the substitute at Dama the fans applauded that effort free kick to Ghana and referee Amedome Vincentia has been in total control of this game. She's got a game wrapped. Very brilliant. You can see she was close to uh, the action. And now we've seen uh, the Cameroonian player who also features in football bringing down Owusa Elizabeth again in this game. And Phobia with a free kick for Ghana. A loose ball cleared by Colette. Picked up there by Ongwene. Bundu that takes it back into the Cameroonian half. Now Ghana and Kunadu sending it to the far side. Cross comes in, searching for Kunadu. Offside position uh, play against Princilia. She was uh, drifting in and out of offside. I think I like so far what um, the, the the two coaches did in this game, the lineup they've set up. For Cameroon, they have four men on the back, and each time they are defending four ladies on the back, and each time they are defending, you had about six players, uh, that's two from the midfield coming to join them, and it makes the you know defense a bit more organized. And that's why it was... Prince Celia. The help that uh, was coming, could not uh, get a leg to the ball. Here comes Bella Rose. Bella Rose put on the run. <laughs> Throwing Ghana. It's all Ghana now, and the attack. A oh, great defending that time from the substitute. Substitute of Lori Ekong Marie. Throwing so taken quickly there by Coleman Ellen. Kind of playing very well now. Santa Sewa leaves it for the new girl, Diwura. 
course, there was a surprise that Diura didn't start this match also. She plays for Louisiana State University. Frickly to Cameroon, of course, as uh, the coach at Tego looks on. Six offsides that the Ghanaians will be caught offside six times, and uh, Cameroon not one time and they've been caught offside. It tells you where the attack forays have been going. Ralph, I think they have to come that close to be caught off, uh, offside, and we haven't really seen, you know, them penetrating the defense of uh, the Ghanaians so far in this game. The Ghanaians have really taken the match all through Asante Sewa, could not control very well that time. And on that replay, we could see it. the ball get into Francilla. Bella Rose drops the header. Janet Colfrit. And look at her from behind, bringing down Flora Kemeni. Free kick to Cameroon. At a very advantageous position on Gwene, set for it, as she has scored many from such positions. When the together was so disappointed when the outcome was uh, cancelled in 2020, set for the free kick here. Opportunity for the equalizer. Look at the eyes of the coach. Here it comes. And it is on Gwene. On Gwene shot was on target, but not strong enough to beat goalkeeper Fafali of Ghana. Tafali looked like she was not in control and uh, she looked like Nguene had already beaten her. Surprised to see her fall and just catch that with no effort. Nguene will be counted as one of the greatest uh, out of Cameroon. But then you might be saying that the greatest uh, women's footballer out of Cameroon might be um, Gail Nganamo, you know, the, who won the 2015 player of uh, or nominated rider again or play. she was the winner of the african women football of football the year yeah and she, she i mean she paid her dues also for the cameroonian women team uh, during her years of service i think she's one of the very 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 important players in the team all through yeah retired now from the national team in ganamo yellow card I say yellow card they're going to Fallon. Fallon Cheno. The goalkeeper getting set for this free kick, a time to be called to action. It's always nice when the referee goes to the wall to say you must stay behind the line. All three girls are plotting it. Some of the training ground plot. Check it out. It comes from Brakia. Brakia Portia. All oh, smiles. Didn't work out, but all the same, not too far off.
Substitution for Cameroon. And of course, Augustine Chocho Ngo has come in to take the place of Kameni. Kameni Look. Flora. Looks like that. This is Zapor is giving up on that dependence on Kanemi, which was where he built the lineup, the formation for the game, uh, for his game today. Sad to see that it's not yielding any results so far. Umbudu sends the ball out. Bella Rosa fighting for it, beating to it by Boakia Portia. Gonna take back control. Good touches on the ball by Cameroon. Bella Rose picks it up. Locates uh, Ongwene. Ongwene! Ongwene shot has been blocked. This Ghanaian defense not allowing the shots to go past them at any time. They're doing very well. Umbundu goes forward, goes back to Colette. Colette collects it, sends it with a left foot. Goalkeeper, no problem at all. She just blocks that one. Goalkeeper, Gabriel Baou, Ange. Didn't start the first match. Uh, Carol, who is on the bench, started the first match. Carol Mimbue. Uh, but now, Coach uh, Zabo noticed uh, something, and uh, that's why she uh, he brought uh, Ange in. And she's been good. Beaten once, though. Not yet shy. Beaten twice. Good head at time from Colette. Priscilla, oh, good football from Priscilla. Great football from Ghana. Uh, she expected a justice uh, to a Boa to move. To Boa, to Buna now picks up the ball, goes back. It is Asante Sewa. Ghanaians are enjoying their football now. Passing the ball around in a great way. Here comes Ongwene. Ongwene's ball. Not able to go past the defense. It's put out by Ghanaians. Ghanaian. Black Queens. <laughs> They are really, really playing a queenly football here. Another substitution comes in. And it is Okboku and Sonia that has come in to take the place of Justice at Tuenebua. Tuenebua, one of uh, those that uh, came in to start this game, their first match in this tournament after coming in as a substitute against Morocco. Coming in as a substitute against South Africa, I should say. This ball goes into torch. Throwing taken. Just have about 13 minutes of the regulation time to play here. And so time running out on the Cameroonians. Ghana trying to move, penetrate through Konadu, but goalkeeper Gabriel Ange not allowing that one to go past her. Nice Cameroon. Header from Boakia takes it away. As far as Coleman Ellen. Coleman gives the ball away. We did say there will be a winner here. 
And uh, of course, the Ghanaians uh, might just prove you right. Well, that is if Cameroon, if Cameroon <laughs> don't do anything in the last uh, nine minutes. Well, basically, of course, from what you're seeing so far, Ralph, it doesn't look like the Cameroonians can match the strength of this Ghanaians as what we have seen, um, the attack is not aligning for the Cameroonian team. Indeed, they have to do something about that attack. The supplies have not been what they should be for Ungwene. A winner corner kick. Corner kick to be taken by Ongwene. Ongwene's uh, corner kick comes now. An in swinger. Goalkeeper coming out. And of course, it was a, a, a strong ball that uh, evaded everybody that converged on that 18-yard box. Coach Zabo can't understand why the girls are not uh, just doing the, what the game plan was all about when they started. Clarence from uh, taken away by Fafali, the goalkeeper of the Black Queens. With how bulky Fafali is, it will be difficult to beat her, uh, you know, in such um, set piece movement. And um, talking about the Cameroonians, I think that's also another opportunity they would have to score here. If the direct build off to the final third doesn't work, then maybe a magical set piece can help them come back into this game. Indeed. We'll see how that pans out. Now Konadu picks up the ball, leaves it for Priscilla. Priscilla, she has on the near side here. Okpoku. Boku, Sonia, a very direct shot to the goalkeeper who had no problem at all with it, Bella Rose. And now hot chase for the ball by Mafo. Mafo, the substitute, not quick enough. Bench was almost uh, celebrating. And you can see the demonstration opportunity comes again. Goalkeeper for Fali. Rose above to pick it up off the head of uh, Rose Bella. Kunadu. Collect away. Chased by Bella. Clarence. Takes it away, Janet. Across comes in. Oh, beautiful defending. That was a commanding and queenly defending there from the Ghanaian captain. Now Ghana at the other side, end to end situation. Opportunity for the Ghanaian, no one at all. She started to go at it alone. Uh, because there was nobody at all. Nobody at all. Well, of course, another attempt, another run. Uh, we saw her make there talking about Priscilla. And just as Ralph said, because there was nobody there, we saw her delivering it straight into the hands of the goalkeeper. Restless situation on the bench of the indomitable lionesses throwing comes for cameroon or oh, chester there on Gwene. bella that was a wayward shot from bella on easy on the bench of uh, cameroon Bella had that opportunity. She should have just done better. Uh, but then the shot was completely wayward. 
Well, tide is running out and uh, she understands the pressure. It's beginning to mount on the team. And possibly that's the reason why we had her, you know, firing that short, hoping they could create something from nothing. And for Bear, very strong girl, She's been doing a very good job on that side of the pitch for the Ghanaians. Bau sending the ball flying away. Umbundu, Colette, all for Cameroon. They are now in a rush and when you are in such a situation you begin to make mistakes that's the case for the cameroonians ralph if this game ends this way two teams didn't get a win in this tournament but at least mali will be proud they got a draw and cameroon if it ends this way it came to this tournament, played two games, and didn't get even a one point. And that will be very sad towards their preparation for the outcome qualifiers. But here they come, trying to get that equalizer, much desired equalizer, but not able yet. Colette sends the ball in. Finally, the ball cleared away. Oh, this is a ball they give. The goalkeeper comes out. She's bit into it, but nobody to connect. Oh, it was a great effort. But the goalkeeper will now say, I did well in coming out uh, to take the ball. It was a good effort at that time. Wasn't completed from Konadu. Thankfully, we had the, the substitute, Lori Komari, uh, there to rescue the Cameroonians. Save their blushes, we could say. Free kick to Ghana, coming from the far side. The free kick comes. Go keep her, no problem. Bawu Ange Gabriel, the lady that plays for Louve, Mimproof. She's only 21, still, still a long way to go in her career. Cameroonians have blooded a whole lot of uh, young ladies here for this Aisha Buhari Cup tournament and the oldest of the girls they have come here with is of course Ongwene who is 32 years of age well ahead of this game uh, coach uh, a yellow card uh, before she is uh, just uh, played in her innocence, uh, Sonia Boku. It's going to say coming into this game, the Black Queens uh, coach, Tego, did say that they remain resolute towards the match against uh, the fellow African women's soccer powerhouses, Cameroon. She promised a different ball game, and we are seeing that here. Well, of course, look at what actually and that card. Uh, she had a beautiful move that's talking about uh, the Ghanaian. And looks like she was beating almost everyone before you had uh, the lady, Oko Sonia, foul on the casting of the Cameroonian side. Well, the player takes treatment off the pitch. The action continues on the pitch. On Gwene. Uh, couldn't go past uh, um, Phobia. Looks like a rock in the defense of the Ghanaians. Clarence takes it away from Lore Ekongmari. Ghana through Prinsilia Dobia, cut off side.
Well, we had Sofia Ofu sending that curse, but it looks like Priscilla was clearly offside. The Moroccan AR got that call right. Shot sends flying forward from Fallon. Decoded there. Ghana takes by possession. A chance for Konadu to chase the ball. Konadu picks it up. No one is coming to assist her. Konadu goes at it alone. And here she comes a steal. Konadu! What a goal from Konadu! She was just all alone. Had three defenders on her. She took the first one away. Took the second one away. Raised the ball very well when she took the third one away. And a right footed into the net. What a goal from Konadu. Great goal from her. I must say. The Ghanaians, they have a wide in the lead. The lead by two goals to nothing. Off the goal from Konadu. And of course, a beautiful run she made there, beating the three defenders set up by Cameroon to stop her. She went around and took her position, took her, picked her spot, and completely took out the goalkeeper, Gabriela Anger Bowell, who you said have, you know, so many years in her career to learn how to defend this kind of shot. Well, I must say, this is a fulfilling game for the Ghanaians. And like I said uh, at the beginning of the game, we had, uh, at the beginning of the second half, we had the Ghanaians looking like they came here to get the goals and they finally got the goals. The goals are now two. Cameroon nil, Ghana two. Konadu and Adobe. And so what a goal. Konadu J Vivian. The lady that plays for Thunder Queens FC thundered that ball into the net for the second goal for, Cam uh, for Ghana and 2 0 against the Cameroonians. And this game is done and dusted. Only the seconds into the last seconds of the regulation time. And I'm not looking at uh, many added on time uh, because we didn't see too many breaks during the match. Sonia. Sonia said forwards are still moving the Ghanaians. We're going to have four minutes of uh, added on time to play here for Ghanaians to enjoy themselves the more. Uh, because the way they are going, Konadu on the ball. She's on side. The flag stayed down. Uh, she ran herself out and uh, fell. You can imagine that she's been making such runs all day so you expect that she could be tired and uh, surely but her goal Konadu J Vivian her goal was really sumptuous Mangwene beating to it taking control Adama Yabangreta, uh, the substitute. <laughs> Princelia goes in, fighting very hard, wins a free kick. That's a foul against Adama, Yabang. A racer, the lady that plays for Luve Mimproof. But now, a tackle from Adama tells the story on the Ghanaian. He's down on the top. And this is a game that has lived up to be building. Take another look at how that uh, tackle came about uh, from Adama Yangbang, racer. But action resumes. We're going to move him forward. Pass uh, threaded there very well by Ellen Coleman. Rolling to towards for throwing from the far side. Going to Ghana. Amphobia, Gladys. Amphobia, Gladys, as she has been a great girl and the defense of the black queens as she plays for lady strikers 
Other time I talked about her playing for the police. No, she plays for Lady Strikers. Substitution. One last one. As Konadu's day is complete here. Her goal is a praise. Of course, widening the lead for her side. But now the coach Tego decides to take her out. And our day Monica, who plays for Berry Ladies, comes in. Ghana in total control of the match. They've been better in all the departments, especially in the second half. The defense been watertight. Ellen Coleman goes back. All they have to do is enjoy themselves on the ball, keep possession. You can see the passage of uh, the ball. Coleman Ellen. Gives the ball away. Cameron take possession now. Good ball by Esther Keith. Ladies and gentlemen, any moment from now, we'll be talking about the final whistle of this match. But Cameron can launch a one final attempt. No time for that attempt. Referee Amedome Vicentia ends proceedings here. And of course, uh, this is a sign of victory, a sign of joy coming from the bench of the Ghanaians as Coach Tego was uh, carried above. And of course, it is a great victory for Ghana against an opponent that you just can't call ordinary. The, one of the powerhouses of African women football beaten here by the Black Queens who played a queenly football here in this very match. Yeah, you can tell from coach Zago that uh, it is not going well for him. Second match in charge of the indomitable Lionesses and beaten twice. Not a good way at all to start a job, uh, but you will be expecting that they will get better indeed. But here from the AM Arena, AJ Arena in Lagos, Nigeria, it is finished here, Cameroon nil and Ghana 2.